Once upon a time on the fantastic planet of Falon, things were pretty intense. Humans had a rough go of it with all those sneaky demons and spooky spirits controlling them during the Dark Ages. But hold on tight, cause in the year 2501 of the Ice Calendar, something huge happened. An asteroid, home to a whole tribe of demons and monsters, crashed right into the Elves' continent, which was a major spot on Falon. Surprisingly, this crash brought everyone together. The demon and spirit tribes joined forces with humanity to work on refining these super cool gems known as the Seven Divine Pearls. But uh oh, here comes the twist. Even with the incredible power of those divine pearls, they couldn't stop the asteroid's impact. Bam! The collision transformed Falon into what we now know as the Six Great Territory and the Seven Colored Sea. That place was once called the Land of Wonders and boy, did it earn that name. Fast forward to today and we're in the City of Wisdom. You won't believe what's happening there. At that time, a bunch of young kids gathered at the shrine, all eager to get their hands on the Book of Power. One little kid named Faho stood out. He stepped up to the center of the shrine, where a shiny pillar of light was waiting. He was hoping to get the Book of Restraint, not the Book of Order, which sounds pretty wise. But while Faho was going through the process, something super surprising happened. An enormous burst of energy came out of the pillar of light, and guess what? Fahua got his hands on a super rare scripture called the Truth Enforcement Book. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the Sea of Awakening region, Lightning City, there's this cool little dude named Lan Ga, and he's soaring through the skies with his magic wings alongside his mom, Sang Yun. When they land on a ship, they meet Lan Ga's dad, Lan Xiang. And turns out, they're like the super important ruling family of Lightning City. Lan Sang is the big boss, Sang Yun is the empress, and little Lan God is the prince. Now they're in the Elemental Sea area, which belongs to the Land of Freedom Kingdom. And guess what's swimming around in that sea? Countless magic fish with crazy powers. These fish can give elemental powers to all the kids in the Land of Freedom. So, Lan God looks down at these amazing fish, and everyone's pretty excited. They're sure he's gonna get some cool elemental power too. Without wasting any time, Lan Ga's mom gives him a little nudge and splash. He dives right into the sea. Meanwhile, in City of Wisdom, there's this shiny pillar of light and something special is happening there. Suddenly, a super talented kid just showed up, blowing everyone's minds. At that time, Xiang Yun has got that mom confidence. She believes Lan Ga is gonna be even more awesome. As the time goes by, Lan Ga hasn't surfaced yet. Oh, his parents start to worry. But just when it seems like forever, whoosh! Up comes a whirlpool, and there's Lan Ga, grinning from ear to ear with not one, not two, not three, but four elemental fish. <laughs> a few years later, Lan Ga and Fahua have grown up and become quite the cool dudes. But turns out Lan Ga is still mischievous as ever, and his favorite thing to do is compete in city tournaments. One fine day, Lan Ga faces off against Jin Yao, a tier 4 space controller. Jin Yao was pretty confident he can take Lan Ga down. But let me tell you, when these two clashed, the crowd was in awe. At that time, Lan Ga had this magnetic charm that had all the ladies swooning for him. In the heat of battle, Lan Ga faced his opponent with a casual confidence. Even when Jin Yao launched this massive spear attack, Lan Ga handled it like a piece of cake. He effortlessly blocked the spear, totally destroying Jin Yao's attack, and then boom. Lan Ga emerged as the victor. Jin Yeo finally realized that Lan Ga was already a level 5 master, and that fight was definitely not fair. Soon after, Lan Ga's dad called him over and made him leave the scene. The next day, Lan Ga and Fa Hua are off on some super cool adventure. They both got some exciting news about the Seven Divine Pearls. Legends say they're real, and guess what? The location of one of these precious pearls, the Peerless Pearl, has been discovered. At that time, Fahua, being the child prodigy he is, was chosen to retrieve the Peerless Pearl. He's totally up for the challenge. But our mischievous Lan Ga wasn't too keen on this whole pearl business. He wanted to avoid it, but then his dad started talking about marriage, and suddenly, Lan Ga agreed to go on the hunt for the Peerless Pearl too. Shortly after, they went on their separate journeys. At that time, Lan Ga hopped on a dolphin, while Fahua sailed on a boat. When they crossed paths, you bet they had a little clash. It was like a battle of strength between them. 
But oh boy, Fahua had some tough folks with him, and Lan Ga couldn't handle all that power. He had to retreat to an island, feeling a bit defeated. On the other hand, there's this woman on another ship who saw the whole thing go down, and she was just laughing at their little fight. Lan Ga, feeling all fired up, challenged Fahua to a one-on-one -on -one showdown on the island. Soon after, they are gearing up for an exciting face-off. Shortly after, Lan Ga and Fahua are going at it, using their crazy moves. Lan Ga tried a wind blade move, but Fahua blocked it like a boss. Then Lan Ga jumped all ninja style, but oops, he crashed into Fahua's magic shield. At that moment, Lan Ga was a bit ticked off, especially when he saw Fahua acting all cool and almost laughing at him. That just fired him up even more. So they both went full throttle, unleashing powerful attacks left and right. It was like a showdown of superpowers. Then, out of nowhere, this guy Song Zan appeared, looking all fierce and ready to rumble. At that time, Lan Go was not too happy about getting attacked while he was already busy fighting Fa Hua. So now, it turned into a three-way battle. Suddenly, Shang Zhang transformed into a gigantic bear, going all berserk. But Lan Go was quick on his feet, dodging every attack like a pro. He even fought back with some awesome counterattacks until Shang Zhang was down for the count. But guess what? There's more surprises. A lady named Sheng Lian, the holy lady from the Shen region and a member of the Lotus tribe, showed up. The three of them started chatting and guess what they're all after? The peerless pearls on the island. Sheng Lin mentioned that once the three human tribes live together peacefully, so she suggested they don't burn a whole army and just fight each other with respect for the ancestors. Then Sheng Lin laid down the rules, whoever wins can go after the peerless pearls. Sounds like an epic prize, right? But wait, things got even crazier. Fafu jumped straight into this dark abyss, thinking that's where the peerless pearl was hiding. And guess what? Longo was like, I'm not missing out on this adventure, and followed Fa Hua without hesitation. But hold on a sec, there's a twist. When Song Zan and Sheng Lian tried to join in the fun, they got stopped by this mysterious wall. Oops, they couldn't enter the gorge like Fa Hua and Lan Ga. Meanwhile, Lan Ga caught up with Fa Hua, and they started talking about this whole peerless pearl thing. Then Fa Hua spilled the beans that apparently only envoys are allowed inside and troops can't enter. That's why their friends were left behind. But they gotta focus on finding the pearl. Shortly after, Fahua and Lan Ga raced along showing off their cool powers. At that time, Fahua was surprised to see that Lan Ga had mastered all four elements. Then they arrived at this cave and inside was a massive orb that seemed to be the coveted peerless pearl. Soon after, Lan Ga tried attacking it with wind blades, but no luck, it was super tough. So they decided to team up and give it a good yank. But oh, things went wild. As they tugged at the giant boulder, cracks started to appear. The whole place lit up with golden light, and there was a mighty roar. On the other hand, above, Song Zan and Sheng Lian were in for a surprise. They noticed something was up, and Song Zan was all determined to break through the magical wall. But guess what? When he jumped, poof! The wall vanished, catching him off guard. Oops, he fell right down, and Sheng Lian had to rush after him. Meanwhile, down below, Lan Ga and Fa Hua were still having this epic tussle. The cobblestone crack kept getting worse and the light got brighter and brighter, until BAM! The rock shattered into pieces. Lan Ga didn't know what hit him and he ended up falling down, unable to do anything. A little later, Shang Zan and Sheng Lian made it down there too. They looked around searching high and low for the peerless pearls but couldn't find a thing. Instead, they found Lan Ga and Fa Hua all stranded and exhausted from the crazy adventure. Well, sometimes things don't turn out as expected. Xiang Zan and Sheng Lian decided to call it a day, realizing the peerless pearls weren't going to be found that easily. So they left, probably planning another adventure for another day. Sometime later, after recovering from their wild adventure, Lan Ga and Fa Hua didn't find what they were looking for on the island. So they decided to head back home, ready for the next adventure. Lan Ga was excited to reunite with his favorite dolphin, and off they went. Meanwhile, Fa Hua hopped back on his ship and sailed away from the island. But as they were sailing away, a humongous and ferocious monster showed up out of nowhere. Suddenly, the sky got all dark, and the sea was getting super rough. Shortly after, there was a massive sea dragon, all fierce and ready to attack. Fahua and his gang had to team up to face this mighty dragon. They quickly created shields to defend against the dragon's powerful charges. 
Fahua tried to talk to the dragon, but it wasn't in the mood to listen. The dragon thought Fahua had deceived its leader, so it launched this huge ice attack right at Fahua. With all his strength, Fahua tried to resist the charge. His shield cracked, but he managed to fend off most of the incoming ice. Suddenly, a golden symbol appeared on his forehead, and at the same time, a chunk of ice lunged at his shoulder. On the other hand, Longo was sailing along, winding his own business, when bam! His shoulder got injured out of nowhere. Soon after, a golden pattern shows up in the air, and turns out the same pattern appears in front of Fahua too. Without even understanding what's going on, Lan Ga touches the golden light and whoosh, he's suddenly teleported to Fahua's ship. At that moment, Fahua is all confused about how Lan Ga showed up, but he's got an even bigger problem. There's a raging dragon on the loose, and it's not in the mood to listen to explanations. There, Lan Ga tries to reason with the dragon, telling he's innocent, but no luck. The dragon is just going crazy and attacking everyone. At that moment, Lan Ga has no choice but to join Fahua and their gang in facing this giant dragon. Soon after, he flies up in the air ready to take on the beast, but oh, things don't go as planned. He ends up falling back onto the ship. Then suddenly, Longa and Fahua's energies connect to each other. Because of that, Longa is feeling all weak and exhausted. But at that time, Fahua is like, no worries, I got this. He's all charged up with energy. Fahua uses his magic skills to restrain the dragon and Longa is trying his best to gather his strength. But he's just so tired, poor guy. But don't worry. Fahu comes to the rescue. He shares his energy with Lan Ga, giving him a much-needed boost. Now Lan Ga is ready to rock and roll. Shortly after, he goes all out and lunges at the dragon with full power. But oh no, the dragon doesn't go down easily. It's a tough battle. Then Fahua has a genius idea. He tells Lan Ga to use a massive move, and everyone on the ship joins forces to support him. If Lan Ga's move works, they'll win the day. But if not, they're in for a rough ride. With no other option, Lan Ga gathers all his energy and creates this huge magic hammer. At the same time, Fahua and the gang pool their energy too. And suddenly, a golden giant figure appears with Lan Ga in the center, all in control. With all that power, Lan Ga directs his attack and boom. The water dragon crumbles like a sandcastle. Not long after, the sky clears up and the sea is all calm again. Afterward, Lan Ga and Fahua head to the ship's room to figure out what just happened. They realize that the Peerless Pearl's power affected them both, so if Lan Ga gets injured, Fahua feels it too. But uh oh, it looks like Fahua is annoyed at Lan Ga for some reason. He wants to teach him a lesson, but oops, things don't go as planned and Fahua ends up getting hurt too. Shortly after, Lan Ga and Fahua are testing out the power of the Peerless Pearl. And let me tell you, it's mind-blowing. They figured out that they can share energy with each other. Plus, they can teleport to each other's location. But they don't quite get how it all works yet. So, Lan Ga tells Fahua to try out different positions to test the teleportation thing. Fahua thinks it's silly. Then they sit down and get all serious, racking their brains. And finally, they find a way. They face each other and touch their fingers together. Poof! Lan Ga gets teleported back to his dolphin in the open sea. He's like, whoa, that was wild. But then, Fahu decides to play a little prank and slaps himself. And turns out Lan Ga feels the slap too, almost falling into the sea. Both of them are annoyed because the peerless pearl linked their minds, so there's no more privacy. No more secrets between these two. And because of that, they agree to break this curse they got going on. The next day, Lan Ga and Fahua arrive back in their cities. At that time, Fahua wasted no time and went straight to his foster father to spill the beans about the whole peerless pearl thing. But turns out, his foster father was kinda stumped too. He couldn't do much to help, but he thought there might be some super cool high-level magic weapon that could break this crazy connection they got going on. On the other hand, Lan Ga was flying around trying to figure out what to do about this crazy peerless pearl situation. But then, surprise, his dad swoops in and ropes him down to have a little chat. Dad's curious about the Peerless Pearl too. Then Lan Ga tells him he couldn't find it and he's off to find the wise elders, hoping they can help with this pesky curse. But when Lan Ga reaches the elder's house, no one's home. Soon after, he sips some of that precious water of immortality that the elder had stashed away. Meanwhile, Fahu has got his own plan to break the connection with Lan Ga. He's wandering around town looking for a way out. He thinks the farther they are, the weaker the connection will be. 
Along the way, he meets a little boy named Yang Xian. They become friends and chat while strolling around. But Yang Xian suddenly falls sick and Fa Hua rushes to help. He takes the poor kid back to the orphanage for treatment. There, Fa Hua learns that Yang Xian's time is running out. Only three months left. Then, Fa Hua plans to buy some leg-sustaining fruit to help, but it costs a fortune. So he decides to borrow money from the ruler. Back to Lan Gao, he's getting scolded by the elder who just returned. Then he explains about the curse and how he accidentally drank the water of life. But he's all fine. Turns out he didn't need that water after all. Shortly after, he gets kicked out and soon some folks show up, telling him his mom's looking for him. And just like that, Lan goes off on another adventure. On the other hand, Fa Hua managed to borrow some money and trouble's still on his tail. The ruler's daughter is following him around, offering to give him more money for free if he gates her. But Fa Hua's not into it. It's not because she's ugly or anything, it's just that she's not his type. Now back to Lan Ga. He reunited with his mom and guess what she wants. She's all about getting him married and having grandkids. But hold on, Lan Ga's not ready for that kind of life just yet. He still wants to have his fun and be a little naughty. So he's like, no way mom, not happening. To avoid any more fuss, Lan Ga leaves his mom's place. But surprise, surprise, he bumps into his dad again. And he spills the beans about the whole marriage thing. Then dad's got a suggestion and Lan Ga thinks it's a good one. Whatever it is, he's ready to hit the road and start a new adventure. The next day, Fa Hua meets his adoptive father. At the same time, there's this big martial arts tournament happening in Shangfa City. The winner gets a super duper powerful magic tool that might just help him break his curse. He's like, I'm in. Soon after, Fa Hua goes to Shangfa City and boy, is it a sight to see. The culture there is so diverse and vibrant. But uh oh, trouble's brewing. Suddenly, a bunch of one-eyed demons show up, and everyone's like, time to clear the way. But then, out of the blue, a woman falls right in the middle of the road. Fa Hua wants to help, but he knows if he does, he'll end up being a target for troublemakers. Fortunately, a masked hero appears and saves the day. He's like, hey, let's have a wrestling match, you sneaky bunch. But Fa Hua's not having it. He jumps right in and knocks the masked man down. Then, as the group moves on, Fa Hu suddenly realizes that the masked man was none other than Lan Ga. At that moment, they both feel pretty annoyed because they traveled all this way only to bump into each other here. Shortly after, they part ways and do their own thing for a while. Later in the afternoon, Fa Hua heads to the tournament court and turns out the prizes for the doubles tournament are off the charts. Everyone's pumped up because the top prize includes a super powerful magic item called the Spiritual Vanishing Seal. Not long after, Lan Gus shows up too, and he's totally intrigued when he hears about the spiritual vanishing seal. He's like, hey, Fa Hua, wanna team up and go for the prize together. But Fa Hua's not convinced of his skills. Then they start brawling right in front of a durian stall. After their durian duel, Fa Hua and Lan Gus finally made peace. Fa Hua's like, okay, we can team up, we gotta split the prize money evenly deal. Hearing that, Lan Gus agree and team Fa Hua and Lan Gus is officially a go. Soon after, they head to the registration room, but turns out, Sheng Lian and Shang Zan are also there. And Sheng Lian's got her detective mode on. She's all like, why are these two entering the doubles fight? Something fishy's going on here. Now, here's where things get hilarious. Fa Hua and Lan Ga look for a place to crash. Fa Hua's like, no way I'm sharing a room with you, bro. So he decides to chill under a tree. Fa Hua's munching on his lunch while Lan Ga's tummy's growling. Lan Ga then asking for some of his food, but Fa Hua don't want to give it because he said he is broke. Lan Ga can't take it anymore, so he heads to a food stall and orders a feast for himself. Just when he's about to dig in, Sheng Lian shows up, trying to play nice. There he starts spilling random stuff about the peerless pearl, just to mess with her. Now Lan Ga's had enough of playing games, so he's like, hey, can you pack some food to go? He leaves Sheng Lian all angry and frustrated because she couldn't get anything juicy out of him. Meanwhile, late at night, Shang Lian goes all detective mode again and spots Fa Hua wandering in the forest. She's curious why he teamed up with Lan Ga for the tournament. So she starts tailing him trying to dig out the juicy secrets he's hiding. But Fa Hua's like, nah, I'm not telling. Finally, he's had enough of Shang Lian's souping, so he's like, hey, beat it. I would want to take a dip in the river. Shang Lian's annoyed and leaves in a huff. But guess what? Lan Ga's there too, taking a bath in the same river. Fa Hua just rolls with it and joins him. They're like, whatever, let's focus on winning the tournament. Meanwhile, Shang Lian's still itching to find out their secrets. 
Fast forward to match day, the Grand Arena is buzzing with excitement. And guess who's in the house? Liu Shujun, a super strong demon leader. He's sitting on his throne looking bored. He ain't expecting much from this tournament, but little does he know the craziness that's about to unfold. The first match is set, it's Shang's Wei, Liang, and Meng Zhu against our dream team, Lan Ga and Fa Hua. And what's got Liu Shujun's attention is that these two are from different cities but teamed up together. Wei Liang is a master of earth and rage elements while Meng Zhu can summon some seriously powerful holy grass. The fight starts with everyone going all out. Fa Hua faces off against Wei Liang and Lan Gut takes on Meng Zhu. It's a close match at first, but then Wei Liang and Meng Zhu switch things up, and that's when they start gaining the upper hand. Then Fa Hua finds himself stuck in a tricky plant cage and Lan goes up against Wei Liang's raging skills. But Lan Gu won't go down without a fight. He unleashes his secret weapon, a massive meteor technique. At that time, Wei Liang is desperate to stop it, but Lan Gu is determined to win. In the chaos, Wei Liang tosses a meteor straight at trapped Fa Hua. At that moment, Lan Gu's heart races because if Fa Hua goes down, he's a goner too. So he rushes to save his buddy, but Wei Liang is right on his tail, causing all sorts of trouble. Meanwhile, in the midst of all the magical chaos, Fa Hua managed to break free from the plant cage. He was quick to spring into action and tried to stop the giant meteor. But alas, he didn't have enough energy, so he did something quite sneaky. He borrowed some of Lan Gu's energy to bolster his own. Poor Lan Gu was left feeling weak and almost got hurt in the process. But Fa Hua succeeded in creating a super powerful shield to protect them both from the meteor's explosion. Soon after, Wei Liang got knocked over by the shield and things were getting pretty wild. And Fa Hua's magical prowess didn't end there. He went on to use his spells and locked Meng Zhu in place, taking him out of the fight. Meanwhile, it was now Lan Gu's turn to show what he's made of. He conjured fiery fireballs and went all out taking on Wei Liang with a vengeance. The battle was fierce, and it seemed like anything could happen. Just when things were heating up, the referee stepped in and declared Fa Hua and Lan Ga as the winners. From his throne, Liu Shujun had a big grin on his face, clearly amused by the thrilling battle he just witnessed. But wait, the drama didn't end there. After the fight, Lan Ga was a bit upset with Fa Hua for sefuming his energy without asking. But Fa Hua was chill about it. And instead, they talked about teamwork. They both felt they weren't as effective when working together, so they decided to practice and improve their teamwork skills. Soon after, they went to the coastal areas to train and boy did they work hard. They practiced various powerful combination moves tirelessly into the night. And when they finally had enough, they left the area feeling more confident in their abilities. However, little did they know sneaky figures had been secretly spying on them the whole time. After a while, it was time for the next round of matches. Fa Hua decided to have some fun and pulled a little prank on Lan Gu while he was napping. He peeked into Lan Gu's dream and saw him surrounded by delicious food. So Fa Hua playfully made it rain food in Lan Gu's dream, waking him up in surprise. At that time, Lan Gu was a bit annoyed, but they soon got over it and headed to the competition arena. Turns out, their opponents were a pair from Lan City, and Lan Gu recognized them. They were the formidable twin brothers named Feng Tianyun and Feng Chanlu. These guys were no joke. They were super skilled wind controllers and Lan Gu couldn't help but feel a bit nervous. Once they were on the arena, the twins wasted no time and asked Lan Gu why he was in the doubles tournament instead of the singles. There Lan Gu respectfully greeted them and simply said he had his reasons. And then, it was game on. Chen Yun and Qian Lu form a powerful formation and launch aerial dagger attacks at Fa Hua, but our hero was ready for the challenge. With his trusty sword of light, Fa Hua managed to destroy the incoming attacks. Now it was finally Lan Gu's turn to show off his moves. He flew up into the air and started conjuring a massive wind vortex. But guess what? Tian Yun and Tan Lu, those sneaky twins, managed to grab hold of his vortex and turned it into an even more powerful force. Unfortunately, Lan Gu got knocked down next to Fa Hua, and that's when things got wild. Soon after, Tan Yun and Tian Lu unleash a super strong wind blade attack, and Fa Hua quickly sprang into action, creating a magic shield to fend off the attack. But Fa Hua wasn't done yet. He conjured a ginormous sword of light and went all out, smashing through the attacks from the twins. Meanwhile, Lan Ga had a clever plan up his sleeve. He launched water balls into the air, sucking up all the wind power that Tian Yun and Tian Lu had gathered. Not to be outdone, the twins got crafty and created a wind bow, shooting wind arrows from the sky. But Fa Hua was one step ahead and made a shield that deflected all those arrows. On the other hand, Lan Ga, not one to sit back, took charge and sent a gigantic water ball flying into the sky. Boom! 
Down came Tian Yun and Chan Lu, landing hard on the arena. Then Fa Huo wasted no time and went straight for the win. He pointed the blade of his light sword at the twins' necks, declaring victory. The crowd was in awe that a team of level 5 players could defeat a level 6 team. After the exciting match, the sun started to set, and it was evening. Feng Qian Yun and Feng Chan Lu were full of praise for Fa Hua and Lan Gu's epic fight. They thought the two of them made an awesome team, and they weren't wrong. But then, the twins dropped a bombshell of warning. They told Lan Gu that another team from Lan City was joining the doubles tournament, and as soon as Lan Gu found out who it was, he got scared like a ghost. His face turned pale, and he became strangely quiet. On their way home, Lan Gu finally spilled the beans to Fa Hua. The person he was worried about was none other than the all-powerful Bei Yue Shangchen. This guy was famous for his extraordinary strength, and the mere thought of facing him made Lan Gu shiver. But Bei Yue Shangchen had promised not to participate in the fight, so there was a glimmer of hope for Lan Gu and Fa Hua. And just like that, the match began. Fa Hua and Lan Gu were ready for action. Fa Hua kicked it up a notch by entering his divine body mode, which made him even stronger. With Lan Gu supporting him from behind, they managed to hold their ground against the fiery and powerful Hu Liji. Then, boom! Explosions rocked the arena and Lan Gu even threw in some surprise attacks of his own. But wait, the fiery Hu Liji was not one to be taken lightly. He showed it off his impressive skills and managed to counter the combination attack from Fa Hua and Lan Gu. But our dynamic dude didn't back down, they kept on fighting together, determined to take down the fire swordsman. Shortly after, Lan Gu, with his water magic, launched lightning-filled water balls at Hu Liji. The balls scattered all around, but Hu Liji sliced through them with lightning-fast moves, sending bursts of thunder rushing our heroes. Then it was Fa Hua's turn to step up and unleash a devastating attack. He charged at Hu Liji with dozens of gigantic swords of light, but Hu Liji showed his prowess by swiftly destroying them all. In a daring move, Hu Liji counter-slashed, destroying Fa Hua's divine body. It left Fa Hua injured and falling backward. But Lan Go was quick to act, rushing to help him up and sharing his strength. With a little teamwork magic, they were back in action and ready to face the fiery foe once more. However, Hu Liji wasn't backing down either. He unleashed his ultimate move, and it was a powerful sword slash that created a sea of flames sweeping in all directions. It looked dangerous, but Fa Hua and Lan Ga managed to miraculously dodge the deadly attack. Now it was their turn to strike back. With perfect coordination, Lan Ga sent a whirlpool crashing into Hu Liji's body, and in a brilliant move, Fa Hua locked Hu Liji into the universal prison, making it impossible for him to escape. And while Hu Liji was trapped, Lan Gu seized the opportunity and threw his ultimate move from the air. Then just before Hu Liji bit the dust, Bei Yue Shangchen made a grand entrance and put an end to the battle. He couldn't stop raving about how awesome Fa Hua and Lan Gu were. He kept his promise and admitted defeat like a champ. The winner was declared and it was time to celebrate. Soon after, Liu Shujun, the big shot in charge, got up from his throne and handed out the prize to the first place winners. But he wasn't done there. He slyly offered Fa Hua and Wan Ga a spot in his army. <laughs> well, that sounded tempting, but our heroes had other plans. They politely declined the offer and dashed away from the tournament arena. But hold on, the drama didn't stop there. As they were making their grand exit, they stumbled upon a scene. Long Shu, the winner of the singles tournament, was itching for a fight with Bei Yue Shangchen. But turns out, Bei Yue had some serious dark skills up his sleeve. Then, in the blink of an eye, Long Shu was down for the count, unable to move at all. After escaping that intense showdown, Fa Hua and Lan Ga met Shang Lian. At first, he seemed all friendly, but he pulled a sneaky move and surrounded them with a bunch of soldiers under the lady's orders. At that time, Lan Go was ready to throw down, but Fa Hua had a clever plan. They decided to play along and let themselves get arrested. But suddenly, they were slapped with force suppressive handcuffs. Soon after, Fa Hua and Lan Go found themselves at an inn facing Shang Lian, who was on a mission to uncover the truth. But Fa Hua wasn't going to spill the beans that easily. He put Shang Lin to the test and demanded a blood oath before revealing any secrets. However, Shang Lin had no other choice, so he went ahead and took the oath. With that done, Fa Hua spilled the tea of the legendary Peerless Pearl. Apparently, this amazing pearl had a physical form in the sea, and Fa Hua and Lan Ga had a plan. They intended to summon the pearl and cut ties with it. 
Meanwhile, outside the inn, Lan Go was connected to Fa Hua's mind and couldn't stop chuckling at their clever scheme. Fa Hua, still talking to Shang Lian, made a promise to hand over the peerless pearl to him. But secretly, he was plotting with Lan Go on how to work their magic. After some time, Fa Hua was taken to the beach while Lan Go was still being held captive. At the beach, Shang Lian urged Fa Hua to hurry up and summon the peerless pearl. But there was a catch that Fa Hua could only do it if the cuffs were removed. Eventually, Shang Lian granted his request. And at that time, Fa Hua pretended to focus hard, while from a distance, Lan Ga took control of the water and raised a pearl-like orb from the sea. Soon after, the orb glided toward Fa Hua, who played along pretending to concentrate. Shortly after, Fa Hua showed off some teleporting skills and rescued Lan Ga from his handcuffs. The gang was shocked, but before they could attack, Fa Hua quickly teleported Lan Ga back to the safety of the inn. Then, just as the bad guys were about to pounce on Fa Hua from all directions, Lan Ga pulled off a teleportation move of his own, bringing Fa Hua back to the inn. These two were a force to be reckoned with. With Shang Lin and his crew outsmarted, they left the inn and headed to the beach to break the curse. The plan was to use a spiritual elimination seal to free themselves. As they went through the process, they made a pact to call each other friends. But, oh, the seal unexpectedly shattered into pieces. Darn, that sacred item turned out to be useless. Feeling a bit lost, they didn't know what to do next. But just in the nick of time, Bei Yue Shangqin swooped in with his portal of darkness. He had some news for them that they were about to meet someone important. In a flash, they were transported to another area, where they were greeted by a highly respected man, the commander of Hu Zhangji. At that time, Fa Hua and Lan Ga were given an incredible opportunity. They could level up to level 9 before turning 30 and become comrades of Hu Zhangji. Wow, what an offer. But for now, the details of Hu Zhangji's mission were kept secret, to keep them on their toes. Turns out, Hu Zhangji and his gang also knew about the amazing Peerless Pearl. And that power is here to stay, so Fa Hua and Lan Gang might as well embrace it to get stronger. They were told that once they reach level 10, they can totally control the Pearl's power, however, that's gonna take some time. But no worries though. Fa Hua and Lan Ga are determined to become super strong and reach level 9 before they hit 30 years old. After their enlightening adventure with Bei Yue Shangshan, he teleported them back to where they started. Suddenly, a pickup boat from Fa Hua came to get them. Then Lan Ga decided to sail along with Fa Hua to the City of Wisdom. He was just too curious about what the city had to offer. On the boat ride, Fa Hua spilled the beans about needing to go to the Holy Temple to get the Sixth Leaf. So he asked Lan Ga to swing by the Wishing House Orphanage and hand over some money to Miss Dung. Soon after, Lan Ga went exploring City of Wisdom on his own. In the city, Lan Ga bumped into a cool guy named Yang Xian, and they hit it off right away. Together, they made their way to the Wishing House and met the lovely Miss Dung. And there, Lan Ga discovered that all this time, Fa Hua looked all thrifty and made money because he was secretly helping the orphanage. He also found out that Fa Hua used to be an orphan himself before being adopted by his loving dad. Then, after their heartwarming visit to the orphanage, Lan Ga had a blast playing with all the adorable kids. And when Fa Hua was done with his business, Lan Ga teleported him straight to the orphanage, and they joined in the fun with the children. Back in Lightning City, Lan Ga spilled the beans to his parents about everything, which one of them was about the incredible Peerless Pearl and how he's already rocking level 6 skills. His folks were stoked to hear all the stories. And after hearing all of his story, his mom wasted no time planning a blind date for him. But amidst all the excitement, Lan Ga had a serious matter to discuss with his dad. He had a grand idea of building an orphanage, just like the one in City of Wisdom. And guess what? His dad totally loved the idea and gave it the green light. And of course, the adventure didn't stop there. Lan Ga teleported Fa Hua to Lightning City for more epic moments. One night, they ventured to the mountains where the lightning pool awaited. And oh boy, that place was electrifying. They practiced hard, trying to level up to level 7. But let's be real, it wasn't going to happen overnight. Fa Hua knew that, but Lan Ga was determined to give it a shot anyway. Soon, Lan Ga spilled his big secret that he wanted to level up quickly and go on a second awakening adventure in the Sea of Elements. But for now, they'll just have to wait and see what the future holds. After some time, Fa Hua was back in Wisdom City, having a blast playing with the orphanage children. But oh boy, Lan Go was dealing with a major headache because all thanks to his mom's blind date plans. He couldn't help but laugh as poor Lan Go was dragged to the event. In the Lightning City, Lan Go's mom gathered beauties from all over the place for him to meet. But none of them caught his eye, he was just too lazy to attend all these gatherings. 
He wanted his mom to stop bugging him already. But hold on, things took a thrilling turn when a mysterious woman entered the scene. Longa was immediately intrigued by her and felt a connection like never before. Then they hit it off, asking each other all sorts of questions and having a grand time. But uh, who wouldn't got straight to the point and asked Lan Ga if he had the peerless pearl. And suddenly, the woman revealed her true identity as Tian Mo Yeming, one of the Sky Demon tribe. At that time, she went full-on villain mode and started causing chaos all around. Soon after, a massive conflict broke out and everyone was on high alert. Then, Lan Ga's dad stepped in, using his powerful lightning energy to fight against the demon. He urged Lan Ga and Fa Hua, who were already there, to leave. But stubborn Lan Go refused to back down, even though he felt helpless. In the battle, Tin Mo Yeming was on a roll, defeating Lan Go's dad with ease. <laughs> then it was Lan Go's brave mom's turn to take on the demon. She gave it her all, but sadly, the outcome was the same because the demon showed no mercy and took her down. Soon after, Favua swiftly teleported the two of them out of there and Lan Go was in absolute rage. He wanted to head back and face the demon, but Favua knew they needed a plan. So they had a little showdown of their own in City of Wisdom, with Lan Go unleashing all his fury. It was a fierce battle, but eventually, Lan Go collapsed from exhaustion. When he woke up, he felt defeated and helpless. But Fa Hua was there to comfort him, and after a long while, Lan Ga finally found some peace. At that moment, they knew they needed to get stronger, so they sailed off to the open sea during a wild storm. Together, they meditated and combined their forces, focusing with all their might. And guess what? They tapped into a brand new power. It was incredible. In the end, the peerless pearl revealed its true form before them. And with that, our epic film adventure comes to an end.